Welcome to the Webby and O'Neill channel, Liverpool. Bitter rivalry, our number one rivalry. Gary, what was it like to play against them at Old Trafford? Oh, they were great days. I mean, there was, you know, especially the manager, he always made sure you, you knew these were your biggest rivals and how important this game was. Um, I mean, we knew that ourselves, Liverpool, for, for many years with a team to beat. We were, we were playing catch up. And uh, obviously, he came out there. He wants to knock him off the perch. Yes. Uh, statement. So, yeah, I mean, it was different. I think what um, while I was here, it was the only time we stayed in a hotel the night before the game when it was at Old Trafford. The, the, the we only never time. did. The only time. Well, for, for many years, uh, I think they started doing that probably after I left. I think they started maybe staying in hotels before games, uh, home games. <clears throat> but during my time, that was the only match that we ever stayed in a hotel before we played at home. And that really just gets the message across a little bit more that that's, that's the biggest game. Oh, I, I, I didn't know that. That's interesting. That, that really got you psyched yeah, up. Yeah, just let you know a little bit more that this was important. I mean, as I say, we knew it. We yeah. knew that the Liverpool game was the biggest game of the season. The biggest game for the players, the biggest game for the fans, certainly the biggest game for the manager. And... Um, yeah, you, you just knew it was a little bit different going at that game. Webby, I'll leave that with you. The biggest. Oh, the, obviously, it's the biggest game, obviously, for the fans as well, Gary. You know, our, our love for them is well documented. You know, we don't like them. And it was a bit of disappointment <laughs> that they won the league, but nobody's seen it last year, which was a great <laughs> thing for, for it to happen. Fantastic. But just, just going, basically, I was quite fortunate the day where you scored two headed goals at, at the cop end. You know, there's plenty of players who played for Liverpool who'd like to score at the cop end. What was it like that day, Gary? I don't like to talk about it really, mate. But if you if you yeah, do yeah, insist, please, yeah. I will uh, I will talk you through it. No, it was it was a weird one um, because the week before, um, the manager had got a letter um, from a, a former colonel in the army or something like that, and and he was talking uh, in the letter. He he talked about um, I'm trying to think of the word. I always forget the word that that he used at the time. Decoys. It's not a difficult one, remember, but I was struggling to get it. So he, he was talking about how they were decoys in the army and he was telling the manager that you need to do this in your set pieces and all that. So we went out onto the, the training pit and we very rarely did set pieces, but we spent two or three days prior to this, that, that game at Anfield uh, going through set pieces. And me and Ronnie would take turns in being the decoy, Coley would run to the near post, Bex would deliver and... Uh, we, we, we ran through it a few times during the week and we thought, yeah, it's, it's working quite well, but when it get, you usually gets to a match, it, you struggle a wee bit. Anyway, it worked like a dream. Worked like an absolute dream. I scored two. Ronnie could have scored a couple uh, from set pieces that day as well. And uh, we beat them 3-1. And it was the only time in my professional career I, I scored two. And I think it cuts to, to the gaffer in the stand and he goes, I won't tell you what he said first, but he went, Pally's got two and complete and utter surprise, you know. So anyway, we win the game 3-1 and we're all buzzing afterwards. When you win at Anfield, it's, it's fantastic in that dressing room. So I'm in there celebrating away and I get the shout to go out and do uh, an interview, maybe with BBC or whatever. And um, I go out there and uh, he asked me about the goal. I said, oh, that's something we've been working on all week in training. I said, it's worked an absolute treat. We've scored, I've scored two, we scored three, won 3-1. Three, I said, it, 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 brilliant, it, it's worked absolutely like classically. So I walked back into the dressing room and the gaffer's there and he whacks me on the back of the head and he went, what are you doing? I said, what? He said, I've just been out. We were playing Dortmund in the semi-final of the Champions League on a Wednesday. And he'd been out telling the, uh, the reporters that we hadn't been working. It was all <laughs> off the cuff. And there's me going out and giving it all away. So he kept me on the back. Of that. So I still got a rollick in. We won three, one, I scored two and get a rollick and after the gaffer. Go, going to Anfield, scoring them two goals. I mean, the intensity and the rivalry I mean, as a fan, going there, it always gave me butterflies and like, the, I was always like dreading going, but that was part of the excitement and all yeah. that, right? Did you, did you feel the intensity on that pitch with the crowd around you? And could you like, yeah. could you feel like the United fans being there? Yeah. You, you're well aware that, that it means the most to the United fans. If yeah. you can go on their patch and get a win, um, then it's the best feeling ever at, at a football game, I think. You know? yeah. And uh, I think that's exactly how the players felt. You know, yeah. you go in there, you're apprehensive, you know it's a big game, you don't want to let anybody down. 
You don't, certainly don't want to let the fans down. You don't want to let the gaffer down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you, and you want to lay a, a statement down when you're playing against Liverpool, play well and try and win the game. But yeah, it was, and it still is for me, it's the game I always look for on the fixture list. I know City have been up there and winning leagues and, and doing ever so well over the last few years. But, you know, I think there's no no bigger rivalry than the Man United-Liverpool game. Well, you, you talk about let, letting down and obviously your two goals is one of the high points. What was your low point? I think you know the answer to that one, don't well, you? Well, that's why I've asked. Yeah, in 1992 when we lost it to, lost it to Leeds. And um, we were listening to the the Leeds game on the radio. And I think that was the day they got beat off Sheffield. No, they beat Sheffield United. And um, in the scored, morning, they they scored a in ridiculous the own goal, Sheffield United as well. That's something like that. And uh, yeah, I remember going there thinking, you know, if we get beat, we're done. And, um, you know, you're just thinking you don't want to be at Anfield and that to happen. Well, none and of, none ultimately... Of, uh, that's that's what did happen, and it's yeah, it was the worst place to be to to lose the title. As a fan, sorry, Webby, as a fan, going there that day, knowing what had happened with Leeds, mm. it was devastating. I mean, absolutely yeah, devastating. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but there is a consolation. It was thirty years until they won it, <laughs> so you know it was a yeah. bad moment. We've not had that since yeah. Webby. Just going on to the disappointment of that day, Gary, obviously losing the league, coming second, and we look at the team we've got now. What do they need now for this next level to jump up? What What do they need? Do they need two or three players? Some people are saying they need a new manager. Some play, people are saying they need a new coach. Now, if you look at we're a second behind a very good City team, so what do we need to get that gap even closer? Um, it, at the moment, I think it's a consistency thing. Um, we're good one week and nowhere near good enough the week after. And uh, I think that's got to be the frustrating part for Ollie. We've got players who are in that mould. One week, they're outstanding. And the next week, you're thinking, looking at him, thinking, you know, I'm not sure about him. So, um, that listen, I think you, you still want players. The, you know, the Cavani uh, thing seems to be talk about him um, not staying next year. If that's the case, I think we need uh, another out-and-out centre-forward. I mean... You know, you'd love to bring the kid Harland in. He looks, he looks terrific. Um, you know, I think Mbappe is talking about him on the move in the summer. Um, somebody like that. Listen, I think Mason Greenwood, given time, I think, you know, he, he could be the answer. Um, you know, but that's a lot to ask of an 18 going on 19 year old lad um, to play up front, up front week in week out for for Manchester United. You know, um, so I think, I think that's something. You know that, that Ollie will be looking looking at, and I think he'll be looking for a big marquee signing to to fill that position. What's your take on the kid who played the other night, who was apparently was linked with Bellingham? You know, I thought it was too. Do you know, I didn't see the game, but I mean, I've heard a lot about him, and um, you know, I I thought the club were were, were interested in him at a time. Um, I you know, I mean, I, I've spoke to people about him when he was at Birmingham, saying he's a player that United really should sign. Um, I've not seen him play over there for Dortmund, as I say, um, but everything you hear back about the kid, he's he, he's going to be a, another star in the making. So maybe we missed a trick there. It's amazing how many people seem to go to Dortmund nowadays, oh, yeah. and and then a couple of years later they go off and, and and get sold for a big fee. So there must be must be a rather rich club. You think it'd be able to hold on to a couple of them yeah, by now? Yeah. One one question before we wrap up here, Gary. Liverpool, like we just spoke before, thirty years which has been fantastic as a United fan, uh, over the moon, not to see him win the league. Uh, and they went and won it. No one's seen him win it, which is another great, great <laughs> It's team. a bonus. You don't yeah, really a, like Liverpool, Tony Gatter. Right. <laughs> I'm but, getting that vibe, yeah. But, but the thing is, your opinion, I mean, you can't knock them for the way they played for the last three years, to be, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, they played yeah. terrific football. Even though, pff, uh, you know, it's <laughs> to get out. your teeth. Yeah, yeah. But what do you, what do you make of their decline from being such a side to to just collapsing? Yeah, I mean, do you think? A, what? Listen, I think the biggest thing uh, for them was losing um, Van Dijk. I think he was the main piece of the jigsaw um, for Liverpool when he went to that club. 
Um, I don't think anybody realised quite how good he was. Maybe he didn't realise quite, but he, he put him in amongst good players. And, you know, he, he was he was very much like Vincent Company was for Man City for a long time. I think that that put the club into a bit of disarray because they, it was almost like a one-man defence for them, wasn't he? Yeah. And I just think through through the season, the Salah thing doesn't seem to go away. He keeps talking about leaving the club and going and trying uh, Spain, uh, for instance. I think that's upset the apple cart a little bit. They've had injuries. Um, a lot of complacency. They've had players. Or, it might be complacency. I don't know. It's hard. It, Everybody always said it's harder to go and win it the next year. Yes. Because you're a target. Yes. Everybody wants to beat the champions. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's something you've got to try and do. And they've not dealt with it. They've got players who aren't in form. Um, you know, on top of that 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 injury with, with Van Dyke, they've had other injuries. The keepers looked a bit susceptible again uh, this year, whereas before he looked like they'd solved that problem. So I think it's it's kind of like eating through the team. It's about a lot a lot of crisis of confidence. Because there's, there's still a lot of good players who've been, who were playing well in that three-year period. So, yeah, it's something that you know, uh, Klopp's now got to try and solve that problem and, and 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 answer the questions being asked of his team. Well, on on that note, we hope Klopp doesn't solve the problems. Yeah. It stays as it is, it is yeah. and we'll be happy with that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Press the like button. Press the notifications, and we'll be back soon. Thank you very much.